Hi guys, I'm glad all my friends are here. It's almost noon, uh, Central Daylight Time. Here's a current live view of Old Faithful. Back up over here is the Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome. And as you know, Yellowstone has two resurgent domes. That's where the ground is rising up because of the magma pushing up from under the surface. And most volcanoes only have one resurgent dome, but Yellowstone has two. And they're currently waiting for Old Faithful to go out. Here's an update what's going on with Yellowstone. For the last week, USGS has, for the Yellowstone area, 93 earthquakes. Yesterday, on the 27th, there was 31 earthquakes. The largest, I believe, was 1.7. Here we got the Madison River area. And also another 1.7. Now, I'll zoom in. There we have the Madison River Norris Geyser Basin. That's the Norris Geyser Canyon Road. And this here is the Madison River. To see all the earthquakes, you have to change the setting to seven days, all magnitudes. And as usual, USGS doesn't report all the earthquakes. The last one they have reported for today is a 0 0.1, right there, the light blue. But since then, at 1436 Universal Time, we have another earthquake, and it shows up on four monitors that I have downloaded here. The first on the left is Maple Creek. The second one is the Borehole 207. The next one is Mary Lake, and this is Borehole 950. And I'll show you the earthquake signatures on those. There you go. Here at Borehole 950, it comes in as a magnitude 2.30. And as you know, the magnitude 2s and graders have been greatly increasing of late. And according to the geologists who worked there at USGS at Yellowstone, um, anything when they started having magnitude 2 or graders, earthquakes, they would be concerned. And it looks like these are volcanic tremors. What are volcanic tremors? You can do a Google search. It says moving magma and volcanic fluids cause earthquakes. They occur in swarms. Well, there was 31 earthquakes that USGS reported, but there was more that I found that they didn't report. Many earthquakes occurring close together before an eruption. They're caused by liquid magma, hot fluids, and gases forcing their way through the crust to reach the surface. You can look this up. I've shown this chart before for four major types, um, seismograms, types of earthquakes. The top is tectonic-like earthquakes. The second one down is shallow volcanic earthquakes. Surface events. It starts out small and slowly grows larger. And then harmonic tremors. See the up and down. If La Palma, there in the Canary Islands, had this many earthquakes for over such a long period of time, I think they would know that an eruption was occurring or going to occur. But Yellowstone is really a very large caldera. It's about 55 miles wide by about 75 miles long. Uh, with new research, they've realized that the caldera is actually much bigger than what they originally thought. So again, this is the most recent earthquake that USGS so far has not reported. There is many marked in red, and I've explained before how when they're marked in red, the earth earthquake monitors pick up the signature and sends a message to the geologist. The average wage, according to Glassdoor research, for a geologist to make there at USGS is about $95,000 a year. So the largest of all the ones marked in red, I would say next would be at 12.04 Universal Time. And here's, here's the uh, spectrogram of that earthquake. There was actually several during that time, but yeah, this is the one that came in as red. USGS has two, one at 12.09, a magnitude 0 0.1 supposedly. And 1204, a magnitude 1.5.
So here's the location of that 1.5. Another thing I notice about all these earthquakes that were occurring within this area. This is mostly the area of the 31 earthquakes plus today is in the area where we've had tree die up. More likely because in the past uh, the gases came up from the ground and uh, killed these all off. Now this image here is from 2015. Yeah, it hasn't been updated on Google Earth. The cl two closest earthquake stations that are within this area, one is Mary Lake, and the other one is a borehole, in fact, that is borehole 950. This here is borehole 950. There's the earthquake as it came in, and it came in as a magnitude 1.56. This one right here is the second one, which would be a magnitude 1.09, not a 0 0.1. Downgraded it greatly. Here is the last earthquake that they reported at 1301. Again, Maple Creek, Borehole not, um, 207, Mary Lake, and then Borehole 950. That earthquake actually occurred closer to the monitor for Holmes Hill, but I did not download that data. All right, here's the 0 0.1, and then over here would be the earthquake station for Holmes Hill. So there's the earthquake signature, and we'll look at the spectrogram. And it looks like the one for Maple Creek is the best one to look at. That earthquake actually comes in as a magnitude 1.77. Again, greatly downgraded. You're probably wondering about this one right up here. I believe that one there is the magnitude 3.5 that occurred there in Stanley, Idaho. Uh, 156 in one second, they're saying. Um, 17 kilometers in depth. No one reportedly felt that earthquake. That one I have as a magnitude 3.51. It might have been actually a little bit bigger. And the reason I say is because for how long the magma lasted. Let me bring this across. Well, let's look at the signature first. We'll bring it across. See, and there's actually two earthquakes in here. But they put them in together. And, you know, if you look at that and see how long the seismic signature lasted. And there's the spectrogram. And there was a, a point where it came in so loud that the data didn't pick it up. And then we'll go over here. And that's where the data didn't pick it up. Because it just came in too loud. And we'll look at the signature again. Right there. See where it's missing? Let me close that and reopen it. Yeah, see that? That's where the data came in so loud, so fast for a moment. Yeah, the, the machine couldn't pick it up. But it was at least a magnitude 3.51. And it was actually two earthquakes. There's the one, and there's the second, but they're putting them in as two, as one and not two. And as you can see here, there are a lot of earthquakes. We got one, two, three, four, five, six marked in red. Um, blobs of magma coming in. Now again, this is the monitor for Maple Creek, which I believe is, no, that's Holmes Hill. Okay, and what's this one here? Warhol 207. All right, where is it? Let's go. I might not have it. Yeah, I don't have it marked here on this map. This is the coordinates right there. Yeah, Maple Creek. I guess I should put that on my Google Earth map. All right, so I added that. And we'll go back to that earthquake, which they claimed was a 0 0.1. All right, right there. And I'll pull it out. There's the earthquake station right there. 
0 0.1, but actually was much, much stronger. Here we have a close-up of the borehole, borehole 207, that's from the Madison River area. And you can see we got magma on the move. We got that earthquake there, um, that earthquake there at 1146. And 11.49. Let me see if I can make it bigger. There you go. And let's make that bigger. Yeah. Looks like we have volcanic and tectonic earthquakes. Let's just pull part of that. and Yeah, volcanic tremors. We'll look at the spectrogram, what was going on. Not too bad. This is what it was showing when I, I pulled the files just before um, noon. Oh, let me go back there. Looks like there was a little line of melt there. And a little hot pockets of melt. And we'll come up a little bit. We'll go look at that one. We'll look at that one and that one. All right, borehole 950. We got two in red. We got that one, which I recovered. And then we got 1146. Let's take a look what the magma was doing when I pulled in the, the signature. Yeah, line of melt way up high. Not too bad there. It's only more recently increased. Let's pull this across. Yeah, see, that's where that second line of melt rose up. And what else we got from earlier? I only went back about 24 hours. Yeah, line of melt there. And there. Now, borehole 950. Again, I believe that's it right there. Yeah, 950. Okay, let me bring this out. This is where all the earthquakes have been occurring. Over here, we have the Sour Creek Research and Dome. Down here, we have Yellowstone Lake. I didn't pull those files, but they're still popping and cracking. The crown's, ground's still getting really brittle. Okay, and that one there is the Mary Lake Station. What happens when they have earthquakes here? Uh, the magma sloshes back and forth to that monitor which is this station here. This is Mary Lake. Yeah, <laughs> look at, yeah, you can see this is, uh, went down too far. Uh, this is where we got blobs of magma sloshing back and forth. Yeah, volcanic earthquakes. And then earlier, there's that one marked in red, and we got an I told you it was two earthquakes, but they there was actually several of them there. Um, it really showed up here at Mary Lake. Yeah, lots of little earthquakes. But what they got how many marked in red here? Um three on this monitor. And then earlier, yeah, look at the line of melt. We got three lines of melt there. Very distinct. Three lines of melt. And it's actually, well, the three are still there, but right now it's really faint. We just have the one line of melt at Mary Lake. There we got Mary Mountain, and I'll bring it out so you can get an idea. Um, the red line is where they have uplift between the two resurgent domes. Uh, the Sour Creek resurgent dome. And the Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome, which is where they have the live web camera. And speaking of La Palma and the comparison to Yellowstone Lake, well, they just had a magnitude 3.3 there on the Canary Islands. Let's see where that was at. USGS is not reporting the activity whatsoever that is currently going on. This morning, the uh, lava was about 800 meters from the cliff 
to the ocean, which is about 350 feet high. So let's take a quick look and see where EMSC says that earthquake occurred. Oh, right there on La Palma. Okay, let's bring this out. Hold on. All right, nine kilometers in depth. So that would mean um, it is in the magma chamber for Cumbre Veje. And let's see here. This supposedly is the area where they're watching for the magma to go into the ocean. Evidently, the top of the cone had collapsed. Um, I believe it was Sunday. This is the side vent that's spewing out all the lava. It has increased once again last night in how fast the flow is running. This is a, a link to YouTube where you can watch it live. And their current public broadcasting system is uh, talking about the magma. Here they're saying 700 meters. Something changed. I gotta check it out. Um, maybe the earthquake, but when their public broadcasting system's talking about what's going on there in La Palma, yeah, I get a little worried because you worry about uh, the island splitting in half and creating a huge tsunami and arriving here at the United States. And another one, a minister is making some kind of announcement, so I'm going to have to check it out and maybe do a video about it later. What made me mad was the government was not warning the people about the hazards of the toxic gas and the ash, the glass in the ash until most recently. And they're telling people with um, health problems, breathing problems, asthma, pregnant women, they all have to stay indoors. But that's typical for the government, not to tell you, warn you about things that could potentially happen, because they don't want you to panic. But anyways, here we're looking at Beehive at Yellowstone. Yeah, Yellowstone is a super volcano, and it's going to take a lot more oomph before it decides to erupt, but it is regrowing. It is gearing up for another eruption one day, who knows when. So anyways, that's all I have for you right now. Any thoughts or comments or questions? Please put those down below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you very much for your support. Please stay safe. And I will talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.